sculpture that started all this is Wild Thing back here. And it came from the book Where the Wild Things Are. I just loved this book as a kid. I loved the artwork in it especially. And that's the first thing that came to my mind when I needed to create a gargoyle project for my students. This picture right here was my inspiration for the project. First of all, it was a perfect hollow ball head. It'd be a great way to begin a project. And then I made a slab body. But you can see there's a problem. How is he going to stand on two feet? So how did I solve that problem? Well, I used the tail as a third leg, as you can see here. The next year I needed a project for my intermediate students. I wanted to teach them about a bust. Now a bust or bust sculpture is about from the chest up. And so I needed some kind of project related to a children's book that I could do from the chest up. Well, again my wife Susan came through. She's a reading teacher by the way and she has access to all these different books. And she told me about these Calvin and Hobbes books. Now I love Calvin and Hobbes. They were in the newspaper for a long time uh, and in the Sunday comics and then he retired so a lot of you haven't heard of Calvin and Hobbes but uh, as I started going through here I got, got thinking what could I do? Now Hobbes is a tiger, is a stuffed tiger of the little boy Calvin. When Calvin is with Hobbes the tiger is alive but when other people are around, like his parents, the tiger's just a stuffed tiger. And so I wanted to, to catch them in one of their normal situations where they're always bickering and fighting and arguing. So that's why I started looking through here and I found this real cool picture about they're in bed and they're having an argument. And that's where Calvin and Hobbes came from. As always, to start with a hollow ball for each head and then build the body which is hollow as well start building up some hair shapes then add the detail into the hair and start detailing in the facial features now they have to fit together so I had to make them at the same time so I have the right sizes now there's the bed which is made out of slabs which are flat sculptures and the slabs are curved around the crumpled newspaper to make pillows and there's a bisque firing. Then I put the black on, then wash it off for the antiquing. Then I cover it up again with a layer of white, and then put the final colors on for the glaze. And there you got it. The glaze fired Calvin and Hobbes. This next sculpture was inspired by a desire to come up with a slab project. Now slabs are pieces of clay that have been flattened out either by a press or by hand. And I was looking to teach my students about how to use slabs to create something. So I wasn't quite sure what to do. Well again my wife came through and told me about a book called Flat Stanley. Well there's a whole series of books. I didn't know anything about Flat Stanley. But when I discovered it, it was perfect for a slab, a slab project. Stanley was this little boy that had a door fall on him and he was flattened, flat like a pancake. So he could go under doors, he could be like a kite, he could fold himself up and travel around the world. And so he was a really great project idea uh, for uh, a slab project. And the interesting thing about Flat Stanley is I discovered later on that there's a website about Flat Stanley. He's traveled all over the world. He's gone to outer space with astronauts. Uh, he's been to the White House. Uh, there's a picture of him with President Bush and on the Lincoln Memorial. 
Uh, so Flat Stanley is really fascinating and you'll have to check out his website as well as check out some of his books. When I made Flat Stanley I cut him out kind of like a gingerbread man. He was made out of a flat piece of clay. I cut him out and sculpted him and, and then the walls were made out of large slabs that I cut out and then I had to see how I fit in there. Even my Flat Stanley has done a little bit of traveling to the Buell Children's Museum in Pueblo, Colorado. He had a neat stay there. It was a pretty cool experience seeing Flat Stanley do some more traveling. Everyone loves Dr. Seuss, and I'm certainly no exception. He was my favorite author and artist all growing up. I looked, had all of his books and just went through them time and time again. Loved the artwork and these crazy imaginative worlds he came up with. Well, the image that came to my mind when I wanted to do a Dr. Seuss book was this elephant sitting up in a tree, but I couldn't remember his name or the name of the book. And it's not Horton Here's a Who. It was something different. Then it dawned on me. It was Horton Hatches the Egg. Now this was actually the third, only the third book that Dr. Seuss ever did. He, he did this book in 1940. And Dr. Seuss has done 44 books. So this was very early and thought, well, that's perfect. I want to do something about Horton. And he's this crazy elephant. Well, maybe not so crazy. A wonderful and faithful elephant who uh, stumbles across this bird who's sitting on an egg and is bored and wants to take a vacation. And out of the kindness of his heart, he says, okay, I'll substitute for you. And so he's up in the tree sitting on this egg. And of course the bird abandons her responsibility and Horton survives storms and survives all kinds of traumatic events up there sitting on that egg. and. At the end of the story, there's one of the greatest surprise endings of any children's book I've ever seen, and I absolutely love Horton Hatches the Egg. Using the cover as my inspiration, I started out with a couple hollow balls and then added the arms and the legs and the ears. Then I carve away until I get the shapes and the sizes that I want to. You can see he's very bird-like. His wings or his ears look like wings. He's a hollow ball, obviously. you got to open him up. Now, my biggest challenge in this project was I wanted him to be sitting up in a tree. So this is a solution I came up with. Then I made a nest out of these little small pieces of clay. And here we have everything together, and I'm going to try it out, and he worked. Now it's time for the bisque firing. Then we antique final glazes and there's Horton Hatches the Egg. Dark clay we focus on the human head and I thought that would be a perfect time to do a project using JK Rowling's Harry Potter. Now one thing I discovered all around the world the artwork is different. In America the artwork is done by an artist named Mary Grand Prix. She does this, these beautiful pastel drawings and every edition of the books or CDs covers in this case she would have a different color scheme and I just loved her artwork as many do. So I thought, well what can I do? Where can I find something of Mary Grand Prix's of Harry's head? All of her books were a little bit different and I wasn't quite sure what to do. Well that's when I discovered this Time Magazine cover. 
uh, she did this after the third Harry Potter book and Time Magazine asked her to do some artwork for an article about J.K. Rowling and the Harry Potter, Potter series. So that's what I decided to use as my inspiration. I do the face first, then form the ears and then shape them. Then I start building on some hair shapes, using the picture as I go along. These are just big and large shapes first, and then I carve them down and sculpt them a little more to the style that I want. Now I'm creating the book that Harry's going to be bust, his head is going to be busting out of, and this helps hold the pages. Then I need to make the pages burst open, and then add the broom and the snitch. Then I need to create some glasses. Now my first attempt at these glasses were not very good; they were too big. And after I looked at them, it says I got to change that. So I, I made some smaller glasses. I thought they'd be kind of fragile, but so far they've worked out really good. Then bisque firing. Then the antiquing process again. The final glazes. And you have the magic of Harry Potter. This next project was inspired by Mrs. LaRue's dog, Ike. Now this is a wonderful series of books uh, with incredible paintings and artwork in them that I just absolutely love. Mrs. LaRue would go on vacation and she'd leave her dog at home. Now he would write her letters about what was happening, especially usually in regards to some, some cats he really did not like. So in his letters to Mrs. LaRue, all of the stories that he would write were in black and white but what was really happening in reality are in color. These are just fabulous books. So I wanted to do uh, a sculpture that illustrated Ike LaRue and his love for these cats. Ike LaRue was really trying to get cats in trouble, but in the end he got an award. Each one of these characters started with a hollow ball head. Now Ike's head had to be shaped a little bit more like a peanut. Then it was bis fired, it was antiqued, then glaze, and you got Ike LaRue. When looking for ideas and inspiration for a sculpture, I'm always attracted to humorous things. Things that make me laugh, or pictures especially, that make me laugh. And when I came across this particular character, Captain Underpants, I laughed a lot. This stuff is really silly, but I really like the drawings of the author of these books. They are very humorous, and he's so prolific, he has series of books you know, that you can get uh, many, many stories uh, regarding Captain Underpants. So there's a problem with that. There's so much to look at. What do I choose to make a sculpture? Well, I, did, I came across this book here. This is number seven in the series, and it's called Captain Underpants and the Big Bad Battle of the Bionic Booger Boy and Part Two, The Revenge of the Ridiculous Robo Boogers. Well, with a title like that, I couldn't resist. So I started looking in here, and I got a lot of ideas from this cover and other ideas from other sources. And the question is, how am I going to put them all together? And that is the challenge of this particular sculpture. But it was one of the funnest ones I've ever done. I hope you like it. My 
inspiration for Captain Underpants came from the cover of the box. And then the booger monsters. How am I going to pose them? How am I going to do their hands? And then the bionic booger boy. He kind of floats in the air like a superhero. Then there's the, all the other characters, Harold and George, Principal Krupp, and Sulu the Hamster. And then what am I going to do for buildings? So I got the ideas again from the co cover and also the colors. I wanted every part of the sculpture to tell part of the story. They're all in there and everywhere you look, you feel like you're part of the action and you're part of the storybook itself. This shows the importance of shadows to sculpting. Before you ever get to colors, you've got to have great shadows. Well, the really fun thing about art is trying new things, taking on new challenges. And I love that about sculpting. Every year I want to do something different, something I haven't done before. And when I came across this book, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, wow, did that have some challenge to it. Now the grandpa character in this book just loves to eat and he loves to tell stories. It just so happens he has a couple grandkids and he tells them all these stories about the place where he says he grew up, the tiny town of Chu and Swallow. Now the land of Chu and Swallow was a really amazing place. It rained food, all kinds of food. And at first it was really nice and then it got really stormy. My inspiration again came from the cover of the book, but also from some of the storms of uh, spaghetti and other things that happened later on. And so I put it all together and uh, tried to overcome a bunch of different technical challenges that I'm going to tell you about. I hope you like it. As always, you start with that hollow ball. The body and the arm are hollow as well, and then I had to support it so the arm could stiffen up. Then I drew the hand on and then sculpted the hand out of that shape, and then started add on, adding on all the other details. Now he's bald, so there's a hat going to go on there. Then the umbrella stick. I have to let these things cure a little bit so they're stiff enough to hold the weight. Now the umbrella is going to fit on top of that. I formed it over this bowl using a slab and then it's going to attach to the top of the head. Then start throwing in some meatballs and some spaghetti. Now I'm going to fill the base around the sculpture with spaghetti. And I'm always referring to the pitcher, back and forth, back and forth. And now we're getting glaze, glazing ready, and it's fired and finished. Franny K. Stein is the story of a misunderstood little girl who goes to elementary school and her friends just don't understand her. In fact, she doesn't have very many friends because she is rather unusual in one respect. She's actually a mad scientist. Now that's a little unusual, a mad scientist, a little girl in elementary school. But that's the story of this book and it is really funny. Uh, it's got wonderful artwork in it again, very humorous things. and. That's what I love. 
are funny things and funny faces and funny events. So that's what I was looking for in this book. Now her mother knows that she's lonely and needs friends um, or needs maybe an assistant. So her mother decides to get her lab assistant. Well the lab assistant happened to, happened to be part lab dog and his name is Igor and he immediately falls in love with Franny. But Franny does not think she needs him. Well he tries to win her affection and gets into all kinds of trouble chasing his ball. The only thing he's allowed to touch in her lab and then things get way out of hand. But that becomes a subject matter for this sculpture and it was a lot of fun. My inspiration for Franny was this amazing picture. It has rich detail. It started with a hollow ball head, but she needed to be taller so I attached her to a slab body. I drew her out, then started shaping her and carving her down. Scraping off a little bit of time until I had the size and shape that I wanted. Shadows again are very important. This is what I used for Igor. Now, you started out with a hollow ball head and body. You start building parts up and you want to compare them to Franny to make sure his size is right. But I got in a hurry. I fired him too quick. He wasn't dry and he blew up. So I had to start all over. Now this is my inspiration for the other items in the sculpture. Let's see if you can see them. Now the glaze. And there you go. project began when our school librarian showed me a book by a graphic novelist from Australia. Now a graphic novelist does a book with no words and just lets the artwork tell the story. I thought that would be fascinating and as I got into this book and started studying it a little bit it is just incredible. This is an artist from Australia who spent four years drawing this book has amazing artwork. Now there's no color in it because it's designed to look old and telling a story of an immigrant from a war-torn country to a new hopeful land. Kind of like immigrants coming from Europe to America. This is a story about a young father who leaves his wife and daughter behind and he crosses the ocean and comes to this mysterious new land full of a language he doesn't understand and all kinds of things he doesn't understand but it has all kinds of hope and he gets his first job and he meets different people he gets his first apartment and uh, discovers a unusual creature living there that becomes his friend and eventually it has a great ending I hope you check out this book and really read all the amazing art in it I created a human head bust of the young father in the story and I had to support his head so I could build a hat. Now I'm using slabs to create uh, a form that the rest of the story can be told on. This is inspiration for where the father escaped from. And these are slabs for more of the buildings and more of the details. Now I'm creating the first apartment that he stayed in when he came to the new world. And his hat turns into the road that's going to be in the new world in which he lives. And there's a little bit of the dragon tail. It kind of represents poverty and fear. There's the apartment. I've installed the bird now. 
And the little creature lives up in that apartment. Now this is his first job. These are some of the, the discs that were a part of the new world. Now his apartment's done. You can see the importance of shadows again. Now it's been bisque fired. It's really quite a relief. Bisque firing or this white clay has its own special beauty. Now it's antiqued and it won't have any color. Just this beautiful sepia tone. created these sculptures because they're fun and it's what I do. I love art, I love drawing, I love painting, and I love working with clay. But most of all I love inspiring young people like yourself to want to read, to want to write, to want to create art. I hope that someday you'll have the chance to make your own sculptures and create your own stories. Thanks for watching.